Hi, my name is Robin Debray, and I'm going to be demonstrating um, Flash to XNA and also uh, Box 2D Automation, the tools we use to make Xbox games here at uh, Debray Digital Works. Okay, I'm just in Flash right now. I'm going to drag a background on, and uh, as you can see, this is a vector. This is just normal Flash stuff. Um, I'm going to put a title. You can put text, Swift to XNA, um, and I'm going quickly here because we don't have a ton of time. Ten minute limit here. Okay, and I've just dragged on a few boxes. I'll build that in Flash. Now if we go back to, um, this is Visual Studio now, as you can see there's a content pipeline down here, and uh, I have the the actual Flash file in the content here. I added that before, whoops, and I forgot to take this out, but that's all right, we'll just build again. And there it is, uh, it comes in as Flash, uh, or actually as XNA. This will run on Xbox, Zune, or Windows. At the, at the moment it's on Windows. And as you can see, all the symbols, the text, and all that stuff is in. Okay, another um, thing we can do with this is uh, we can actually create box 2D elements. So what I'll do is I'll convert one of these to a symbol. I'll call it hex. You can call it anything. And if you go in, and um, I'm just getting the pen tool here, and anything that's a red outline without a fill alone in a symbol um, is kind of flagged by the framework as a, a shape. And um, here I'll group that so it comes to the top. So as you can see now, this has a red shape around it. So what's going to happen is that's going to be parsed and those polygons in that shape are going to become the bounds of that shape and it'll automatically become a box 2D object. I have some default gravity in here and I have a default mouse thing. So as you can see, this is a box 2D shape. These are still just regular flash symbols. Okay, I can go back now and um, um, of course we don't necessarily want for this demo to uh, not have shapes like that so um, I can just create shapes like this and another thing we can do is we can add joints that's a very interesting thing about Box2D which was uh, incidentally created by Aaron Kato and a wonderful program if you ever use it there's a flash version and uh, um, a C sharp version and originally I think it's in C++ um, and this this framework goes to flash or to uh, XNA so um, it does both. I'm just naming the joint here. I'll name it D0. And what a distance joint does is it keeps a constant distance between two objects. How does it know which two? Well, these two have the same name, the same instance name. If I put another joint here and I call that D1, um, it will keep a, a constant object between any two joints with the name D1. I can obviously do that for all joints. Um, maybe I won't. So D2. Okay, now these four joints will be connected. And of course, if you want them connected closer or further, you can just drag this closer or further. We build that in Flash and go back to Visual Studio. And now because of the content pipeline, we have zero changes to this code. It'll automatically detect which Flash files have changed and automatically update those. So it looks approximately the same, but if we lift this, as you can see, these things are all strung together. You can see the long joint and the short joint there. Um, and uh, that just happens, happens automatically. Another thing we have here is uh, revolute joints um, and uh, you can make things rotate. I can obviously make this rotate. I can bring in some other symbols as well. I believe I have uh, some bodies here. I guess I have a star and I believe I have a flower. Alright, and uh, these revolute joints also can have a name. We'll give this one R0 because it's our first revolute joint. You can of course call those anything. This one we'll call R1 and uh, maybe we'll make a duplicate here onto the background of R1. And what that'll do is it'll spin it around the background. Okay, I'll compile that, and I'll go back to C-sharp, F5. Um, this is the XNA Game Studio, by the way, in, C in Visual Studio. Okay, and as you can see, this one is rotating, and this one is doing the circle thing. Great. Okay, another thing you can do is um, you can actually... Here's the, this, the content processor, and you can see that it goes in and compiles a flash file. There's th this code kind of lives on CodePlex right now um, and it's basically a Swift parser and converter and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, but what you can do is you can make a distance, like a class to encapsulate that entire Swift file. And in that class you can have things like um, background names and, and uh, collection names. And what it will do is it, in the flash file, right now I'm clicking on the background, if I name this BKG and go back to the um, uh, C sharp file here, it will actually say, hey, there's a, a match here with the symbol BKG and BKG. What type is it? It's a sprite. 
that's um, so I'm going to convert that into a sprite. Had it been a more complex object like a, a house or something with ten elements, uh, as long as the flash had those ten elements named properly, it would instantiate that class as well and uh, populate those elements. So it kind of becomes a tree. Um, this is done with reflection. I'll have a future tutorial about that. Um, just to show that something's happening there, I can say bkg.visible equals uh, not true because it's already true equals false. Um, and also you can see on here that um, there's there's kind of an entire uh, flash-like framework. We have add child, remove child, um, and of course we have the draw methods from C the C sharp side. But <clears throat> it's a very similar experience to using Flash. We have all the properties, um, and uh, I believe I did compile this Flash file, which is important when you do the naming. The other thing is I can name this hex zero and this one hex 1 and I could go all along hex 2, hex 3, hex 4 I'll just do the first two and what will happen there, oh and I'll compile that again um, and what will happen there is uh, it's, it will look and it'll find hex and it'll notice the numbering 0, 1, 2 and it'll notice this is a collection, any form of collection is fine, array or um, something like that and it'll populate that collection in those orders of those numbers okay I'm just gonna run this now and uh, what it's going to do is now not have a background. Do you notice how we we had the background in and uh, we made it visible false and then it disappeared. We can actually see that come in like this if we put a breakpoint um, when it hits that code and we can reflect over background here. Um, we're going to run out of room there but uh, as you can see it's just the regular background populated from Flash and we have all our um, populated names. Okay one more thing here is we're just going to uh, do a a quick demo of um, of different things that this this can do and basically box do two d can do here's a a joint framework that we were kind of looking at a simple revolute framework a gear sample gear joints one thing affects it another so this will turn that this will push that um, here's a game we've been working on it's uh obviously a lot easier to create game game elements by uh um, using flash than it is manually. Um, here's uh, this isn't obvious from what it looks like, but what it's doing is doing partial instantiation. So it's in instantiating one definition from within a flash file or one instance on one timeline. Um, so you can do that kind of level of control. Here's a prismatic joint sample. Um, you can see how prismatic joints work. Um, here's a revolute joint sample. And one other thing is you can clamp elements a lot of these joints are clampable and the way we do that I'll just switch back to flash here for a second the way we do that is um, you can see this with uh, uh, there's uh, multiple frames I'll bring the frame thing down okay so you can see the multiple frames here and it's easier if you turn on highlighting you can see the max and min the min is on the left or the first frame or the second frame I guess and the max is on the third frame and that's how box 2d knows to limit these things um, to to where they can go and this one limits to where they can bend to together. Okay, um, here's a pulley joint. You pull them. That's why they're called pulleys. Here's uh, just a fancy joint that does a whole bunch of stuff um, or a fancy test. Here's a little bridge application. This is done by um, hooking distance joints very close together and they bound together. Here's a little seesaw application done with a few different joints. Um, and here's a motor joint. You can specify in the action script of your Swift file um, when you give it a name, say R1 is your revolute joint, so R1.motor speed equals 2000 or whatever you like, and that will actually um, parse and hook up into the flash. Okay, well, thanks for watching, and um, we'll have more demos in the future. Uh, we'll also have some Xbox games coming out, so maybe um, if you'd like to follow along, that's great.